A friend of mine asked me how he could turn an image like this one into a video like this. I'm sure many of you have seen such examples on social media. I produced a video to show him which tools I use. I thought I might as well share it with you on my channel. I'll go through different AI video models to show you which ones perform the best and which tool I use. So like with AI imagery, there are multiple platforms that generate AI videos and it's hard to choose from which ones to, to work with. And many of them are priced quite high. So you've got Sora, $200 a month, which I think is way too steep if you consider the results that you get out of it versus the others. But you've got Runway's Gen 3 or Runway's uh, platform that is, I think, at $15 or $20 a month. And, and that's kind of the price range. So the platform I like to use for creating imagery and videos is Crea.ai. And the reason that is, is at the price of... Um, $10 a month. I'm on the $10 a month uh, subscription. You can go up to the 35 uh, or 60 But at $10 a month, I'm getting access to multiple image and video models. Obviously, there's a limit very close to this month's limited usage, but it's for most people, you wouldn't use it that much. So what they've done is allow you to connect to different image generators and different video generators at that $10 a month price range. You can click on top here to generate in real time. So you can sketch. I have a video on that sketch to image in real time. I'll link to that video in the description. And at the end of this video, uh, you can create an image or you can create a video. You can also do it at in the home page. You can click on the video icon here, image. And immediately you're given a screen that kind of looks like chat GPT. On the left here is your sessions, your project all the videos you've created. On the bottom left are all the models that they offer. So you get to use all these seven different models currently. The Hyun Yan model basically is just prompt to video. The others are prompt with image to video. So for example, if I take the Hailuo uh, model, which is from Minimax, you've got the O1 Live, which is a very good model as well uh, from Minimax. You've got Luma from Luma Labs. Uh, more their reasonable model. It's not their new model, which is excellent. Uh, Runways, probably Gen 3 model, I assume. A good model. Kling 1.6 is a very good model and Kling 1.0 Pro, um, also a very good model. And I'll compare them. I'll show you what the results I got from each one. Um, so let's choose Hailuo. And what you've got here is the prompt. Upload your start frame, the image that I showed earlier. So now that it's uploaded, this is an image of my parents when they went on a trip in Europe. And so I scanned it and I loaded it up here. Quite a challenging image that I've chosen to, to be honest, because there's a lot going on in the background. There are other people and it's really important that you get your prompt right. Like with any AI model, language model, prompt is king. In this case, obviously it can describe to itself what the image is. There's a man, a woman, there's other people in there, but you want to give it the actions. You want to tell it what you want to see happen over these four uh, or five seconds that they give you. I think it's five seconds in this case. I don't think, ah, here you can also extend the video if you want. So you can actually keep, get, have the shot go for longer periods. So if you really like the four or five seconds that you got, you can ask it to extend. So in this case, I wrote a man and a woman walk down a path. They're smiling and looking at the camera. The man points towards the camera, handheld camera style. So I really, I wanted to challenge the AI models because I wanted to see if it could get the pointing, if it could get that action in and that they can actually address the camera that's looking at them. And let's have a look at what each model did. So let's look at the first video, Hailuo, and it did a reasonable job. The issue with all AI models currently, and they're getting much better at is maintaining consistency of character. So if you look at them right here, there it's all good. First few frames, then ever so slowly as you progress, their features change, right? But what I, I like about this particular video, the walk cycles are good. Um, the lady in the background is quite good. There is a morphing here of this guy who's walking with this lady. So he kind of just hangs back and suddenly morphs into some weird stuff. He looks like he becomes, I don't know, Robin <laughs> Batman. He's wearing a eye band or something there. You know, obviously we're focusing on the couple and suddenly her face, my mom's face has changed completely. Here's a bit as well. 
Um, the pointing is quite good. So I don't see any here. There's a kind of weird morphing of the hand. And also this lady is just kind of morphed into some strange thing. But reasonable, uh, reasonable result out of Hailuo. The next one I tried is the O1 Live model. It went more kind of slow motion feel. Walk cycle is quite good. It changed. I don't know if it changed his face too much. So it was quite good. Again, you had this issue of the morphing of this guy in the background. Um, but again, quite good consistency. Even with her, it kind of didn't know what to do with her in the background. For them, the walk cycle is good. I'm looking at his feet. It did morph his face into a different character. Not quite him, I think. But generally quite a good uh, video. So next up is the Luma model. Uh, this one I was disappointed in as you can see look it's it just kind of got it all wrong i mean it, it's the it walk cycle is i don't know what's going on with the legs it's all kind of morphing shoes changed even for him i mean that's an odd foot they've gone turned around this couple there's some guy standing there static yeah i wasn't impressed with luma one thing that you want to take into consideration and understand is that these all single iterations using i was just comparing them using one iteration per model. With AI imagery and AI video, you do want to iterate, trying different prompts, adjust your prompt, try and even the same prompt, try it again and again to try to get to that result that you're satisfied with. Next is the runway model. Again, I was disappointed in this one. I, I, I don't know if they're using which runway model they're using, but the one that's available on Creo is, is not uh, impressive. For some reason, it gave her trousers. It completely morphed their faces. She starts bare-legged, wearing a skirt, and then very quickly, she's not. She's turning her legs into having um, trousers on. His face shifts towards the end into someone completely different, and the same with her. That's just not the same person. The couple in the background are not bad compared. So it's kind of I wish I could take this couple and composite them on behind one of the other videos. Also, it ignored him pointing and them looking at the camera. It's got them smiling, but he's not pointing and they're definitely not looking at the camera. So it didn't stick to the prompt and didn't stick to consistency as well as, as, well as the others. Now, I did try to fix that runway issue where by changing the prompt a bit. So a man and a woman walk down a path. A man, The man is wearing a leather jacket, trousers and black shoes. The woman is wearing a leather jacket and short skirt. Her legs are bare. So I'm trying to kind of prompt it so that it understands that her legs don't have trousers. And if you look at here, you know, she's suddenly wearing trousers again. Let's just watch it. It's kept their faces okay. But so, but you see how his, his hands morphed and the people in the background again, it's just a strange thing happening. This person suddenly appears. So Runway just wasn't able to pick up on that cue of and, and it's very slow motion so I, I i just again the second iteration it's only two iterations that i'm trying but i just wasn't it just didn't understand that she's wearing a skirt and she's her legs are bare next is the cling 1.6 model there's aspects to this one that I, I really liked and obviously some issues i think it's just natural motion up until a certain point yeah, so obviously the, his hand where he's pointing is now morphed into having trouble with that. I mean, Kling is considered a very one of the leading models and, and very good. Everything up until this point, till the hand is about to start changing shape. So that first one and a half seconds is really good. Yeah. But then, of course, his hand morphs. I'm looking at the lady in the background and she's very good. I'm looking at my mom and there's nothing wrong with her too much. only thing they have a problem but also the fact that they get close to the camera they're looking at the camera they're engaging the camera like the prompts asking and look how close the video has gotten them to the camera and kept the consistency of camera uh, character quite well so it's interesting that obviously this is an old photo that's got stains of the white in the paper it's kept that in uh, as like as if it's a wall or something but the people in the background are moving um, everyone there in the background's moving. She's behind the um, small mini miniature building. Uh, so this is obviously in Holland where they've got that park. 
So there's a bit of a shift in her hair. Maybe not. It's it's. But I, I find uh, this was probably the better video. The Kling 1.6 did the best job, I think, except for that morphed hand. So again, I would iterate on that. I would see if I could kind of improve on that through prompting, through or just letting it try again and again. The question is, would I get them getting close to that camera? You'd possibly have to prompt for that. And the last test I did was um, on the Kling uh, 1.0 Pro. This one was very disappointing. Um, it added color and it turned my dad into a lady. And it, just a lot of morphing, consistency of shoes. For some reason, these two shoes are wrong. Starts giving her trousers like uh, Runway did. The people in the background not being treated right. Adding buildings. Well, I guess it's okay. But look how it morphed. I mean, the camera is going with them and kept her quite consistent, to be honest. I don't know. Didn't do a good job. So another free tool that you could look at, one of the platforms, the good platforms of video generation, is called Video. So in video.com, uh, they have a very a new model called Video 2.0. They do reference to video, image to video, text to video, like the rest of them. They have the paged version. I think it's around the $10 a month. Again, that, that range, the usual range. Lots of examples of amazing videos that are being created out of there. So again, you'd click on image to video here on the left, and then you'd upload, click here, upload image. So upload the same image that, for example, that we used, that I used earlier. Uh, your settings, you'd prompt underneath the image that you uploaded. You can have a second image if you want. So you'd have a keyframe. So start with this frame, end with another frame if you've got that for reference. If you're not paying for the subscription, then you get four seconds. Eight seconds is available to paid subscription. Resolution, again, you, you're getting less resolution. You can upgrade to 1080p, which is very good quality. And then you've got movement amplitude. So you can tell it move very little or have, I want a lot of movement in there. So if you were prompting this boy to run fast, you'd want a large amount of movement. Auto, you can leave it on auto and see what it does for you. And it generates for free one video um, at once. So you're not getting variations. And of course, if you're free, people get to watch it. It's kind of open to people to view. So let's have a look at the results. If you are not paying, you'll get a watermark at the top right here of video. And it did a reasonable job in a way, but look at that walk cycle. It's This is where I left it on auto. It just, her walk is a bit unnatural. It's a bit strange. And his hand's doing some weird stuff. He's not pointing a camera. They are looking, there's a weird, there's, the resolution's not great. This guy turned into part of the construction there. The lady in the background just keeps walking. She's okay. So this shows you that, you know, in Korea, I've got access to multiple models at the same price of here. I'm, I'm limited to one model that's not giving me the result that I would have used or I'm happy with. Because I didn't like the, the amount of movement, I used the small amount of movement setting. And here they don't even walk. They're just kind of <laughs> kind of stuck into in place. His hand or some weird thing morphing is happening in his hand there. Everything is in some kind of weird stasis. They're trying to move like as if they're stuck. They want to move but they can't. Yeah, it's it's a good model. I've seen it some videos of it that are excellent, but you have to work with it. And so I would stick with Korea and what the models that they have to offer. So as you can see, you can actually have quite a lot of fun with imagery, photos that you've got lying around that you've taken in the past. Uh, for example, this when my brother's dog, when she was a puppy, I took this photo of her years ago. And, you know, you can play with images of your pet and just make them move or a, a piece of art, like a painting that I'd done of my nephew, I actually maintain the style of it. I asked it, prompted it to blink, but it just the blink is a bit not full blink there, but then it manages to kind of move him and blink him, make him sad. It's sticking to the style. So you can have a lot of fun with that kind of artwork that you've created, paintings that you've created. And if you want to move them and animate them or just have your favorite pet kind of a video of them, what they were like when they were in, you know, young. So go for it. <laughs> so there you have it. A quick, easy way to turn your photos, your images into video. Uh, I started my career in animation and worked in as a film editor as well. So 
It's kind of funny that I haven't really touched this AI video space yet. Um, I have a lot to say about it and how it's going to affect the industry. If that's something that interests you and you actually want to hear more about video, AI video, and where I believe the industry is going as a result of AI, uh, please let me know in the comments. And I'm actually thinking of doing a video about AI versus Hollywood. I think the industry is in trouble, uh, honestly if they don't change. But yeah, if you like this video, click the like button and do subscribe to my channel for more AI tips and tricks. And if you want to know more about Crea and the real-time sketch tool and how it works, turning your sketches in real-time into AI imagery, then click on this link here to learn more.